Welcome to Tabletop Impulse. I'm back, and I decided that rather than write up a big text-based blog post, I would go through the Sisters of Battle miniatures that I've been painting over lockdown on a YouTube video, and we'll see how this goes. So, let's get straight into it, and the first model that I want to show you is the Canoness from the starter set. So, this is a Monopose uh, Canoness miniature. It was quite a nice model to paint up. Um, there's been a little bit of confusion in the game about how this model actually works on the tabletop. Um, originally, in the rules, you couldn't actually use the Canon S as the model was equipped. As far as painting goes, I think I did a pretty good job. Um, the power sword's quite simple, it's just using blue contrast paint. I know that I probably could do a better job. Um, I have actually gone back and repainted that power sword a couple of times to try and uh, get some more effects on there with the contrast paint, rather than it just being flat contrast paint over a power sword. The trouble is, I know that there are more advanced techniques you can use to paint power swords, but I can never seem to replicate that uh, across an army. So, if I was doing a character that had a particular kind of a sword, I might try a little bit more to to, to get it, you know, to get it to look special and unique. But I I wanted to paint it in such a way that I felt was replicable over the other units in the army that also had swords. Uh, in terms of, I may as well go through the basic. Well. I, no, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go through the basics when we get to the Sisters of Battle squad, and then that will cover your things like the black armor and the red robes and things like that. So, the next unit is the Sisters Repentia. Now, Repentia had a really big redesign. Uh, the, the Metal Repentia, apart from only having four or five different poses, the Metal Repentia were sort of a bit more... They are a bit more heavily sexualized, and then they also had some strange sort of... They were trying to look grim and dark, but they didn't really, they didn't really nail it. They just kind of looked like naked girls with chainswords with bags on their heads. Um, these new plastic miniatures are great. So, paradoxically, they're wearing, um, they're wearing a lot more clothes. And when I first saw the renders of the Repentia, I thought the models didn't look that good because they kind of look like they're wearing pre kit when they initially showed the render, like, it looked strange, but once you see the models in the flesh, I mean, they're fantastic miniatures. You know, they convey that sense of, um, you know, penitence, ashes and sackcloth. They do still, to my eye, have, you know, an amount of uh, novelty to them. You know, you still get to paint quite a lot of um, skin, if that's what you want to do, but it's also been kind of grimmed up with with the interface plugs for the power armor and there are you know many of them actually have blades stabbed through their flesh now i know there's a slight fluff question a background question about should sister battle have interface plugs for their power armor because they're not space marines and they don't have the black carapace so do they interface with their power armor in that way or or not but i mean it looks really cool, and at the end of the day, Games Workshop's always been a miniatures-driven company, so if something is on the miniatures, then it is canon, even if it um, even if it contradicts the pre-existing background, that's always been the, um, the way that they work, so I think it looks really, really good, it really adds to a sort of body horror element to it, it makes it look more interesting, uh, really love the models. Also... Uh, really popular in the meta at the moment. Now, obviously, we're going into 9th edition very soon, and I don't know if the tactical advice for Sisters of Battle in 8th edition will be the same as the advice it is in 9th edition, but I know that two or three squads of these are popular in, in, in sort of competitive lists. Now, the way I'm approaching my collection, I really just want to, with the exception of the basic Sisters of Battle squads, I really just want to paint kind of one of everything. Um, which will mean, you know, I probably don't have the strongest army, but the way I see it is I'm going to sort of go for one of everything, build some army lists, and then if I decide, oh, I really need more of those, I'll go back and add more later. I, I really do intend, I'm, I'm always in more of a painter than a player, but if I am going to make a go with this YouTube channel, then I am going to need some content that isn't painted miniatures because it takes so long to paint the miniatures to this standard. It will be like one video every three months. Um, so I will try and do some more sort of um, gaming content and rules content and news content and speculative content. And I think rules-wise, yeah, uh, 
I think to become really good at a game, to become really good at 40k, you need to play one army over and over again and really refine it. And I think in the past my problem has been, you know, I have lots of armies. I have every Imperial army you can mention. I've got an Imperial Guard tank company. I've got a Space Marine army. I've got a Mechanicum army. I've got Knights. I've got uh, some Custodes. There's loads of different things. And I tend to pick one off the shelf, play a game with it, and then maybe three or four months later pick another one off the shelf and play a game with it and the result is i can never remember any of the stratagems um so moving on we have the uh repentia superior which used to be called the mistress of repentia of repentance and they've renamed it to repentia superior i guess because again because of the sort of slightly lewd connotations but it, it remains an angry woman with a whip um again this is the model from the starter box which i really prefer to the one in the multi-part kit, I am a little concerned that that whip is going to break the first time I try and transport the army somewhere. It has already broken whilst it was being constructed and photographed. That's how fragile it is. I think I've got it back together. And hopefully you can't tell looking at the image, but it's one of those things where it's very difficult when Games Workshop produce a model and you look at it and go, that's really, really cool, but can I transport it? And it's there's that tension between... A miniature is a gaming piece, right? And a miniature as a work of art. And you, sometimes you look at these and go, which which is this? <laughs> uh, moving on, we got the Sisters of Battle squad. Um, this is the first of uh, three squads that I've got sort of finished so far, basic sister squads. And this is the big one, the Ten Man squad. Now, I don't know if Ten Man's... Uh, ten Man squads aren't optimal now, right? Everybody's talking about running them as five man, or I should say, five woman squads, but I tend to say man as a gender neutral term, I don't know if that's, I don't know, but yeah, they, they tend to say run them as five model units, that's what I'll say, they tend to run them as five model units, because that's then they're cheap and they're bare bones, and then you've got more points to spend on other things, but I really like the idea of the full, uh, the kitted out, 10 model squad with the heavy flamer and the melter gun and the banner and the cherub and the, the the sergeant there and you can then you can do fun things like you can use the holy trinity stratagem where you've got a flame weapon and a bolt weapon and a melt weapon in the same squad you've got a squad that can target different things if there's a tank over there and another target over there you can split fire and it's just a really um it's a really useful utility for something that you're going to send up the board so that's why i decided to build that squad that way moving on we've got the first of the two five uh model squads so i did do two of the sort of um on meta loadouts for squads where it's just five sisters with two storm bolters these are really cheap in the game and you just sit them in the backfield and use them to hold objectives or whatever now i should talk a bit more about the painting these um basic sisters so the really important thing about sisters of battle is that actually their armor is two different textures for most of their armor is is is, is sort of the black ceramide the armor stuff but the they have a corset and they have gloves which are black leather now i've seen some people um including you know former gw painting guru duncan rhodes has painted those leather parts actually brown um, I wanted them to be black, but be leather. Now, that's tricky to do, to stand out black leather with um, black armour. So, the armour is highlighted up with the, the blues. So, um, Dark Reaper, um, a little bit of Thunderhawk blue, and then a tiny little spot highlight of Fenrisian grey, which is really quite a bright colour. Whereas, the leathery parts, so the gloves and the corset, they were had done with the, um, the Skaven greys so i think it's skaven blight dinge and eshing gray whichever's the darkest of those first and then a little high a li as an edge highlight and then a little specular highlight with uh the lighter of the two and that's all just over uh abaddon black um, and in fact often it's over chaos black spray because i'm lazy and i know that you should flow abaddon black over the chaos black spray because it has a slightly different texture but i am too stupid to tell the difference so Quite often it's straight over the spray paint. Here's the second five uh, model squad. Um, and the only real difference here is this one has the limited edition. Is she limited edition? The separately sold anyway, sister uh, Amelia. 
on the plinth. Now, slightly less optimally armed because she doesn't have the free chain sword. I think in most games I probably just tell my opponent and this sister superior also has the free chain sword. I wasn't going to ruin a sort of special limited edition model by trying to pin a chain sword or convert the model on the back there because you know it's that tension I was talking about before. A miniature is a piece of artwork versus a miniature is a playing piece and I just I wanted to leave that one because it was you know, it was directly modelled on the Karl Kapinski artwork. I just wanted to leave it as it came in the box. And if my opponents don't want me to have the free chainsword, then I'll just play it without the chainsword. Moving on, we've got Seraphim. Now, Seraphim are from the starter box, but slightly converted. So, instead of having all of them with bolt pistols, all the four uh, normal troopers with bolt pistols, two of them we converted to have Inferno pistols from the multi-part seraphim box so i have got one of those sitting around unbuilt and what i will do is i will eventually build and paint that up as some seraphim uh, which don't use the inferno pistol parts so i won't run into any problems there these were all really painted in the same way uh, the plaza pistol is quite interesting the plaza pistol glow effect i think i followed one of the warhammer tv tutorials how to do a plasma pistol glow you essentially use a sort of lazy dry brush almost and deliberately get some of the dry brush on the gun casing around the plasma vent so it looks like you've almost got a little bit of object source lighting the one thing i will say is these flying stands now i ended up gluing them with a little bit of super glue because there's no way to have them just sit in there like in the old days when you used to have the the little stork flying stand and the model you could just sort of sit them on because it was like a little hole it would sit on the stork and you could pop them off again these new ones it's like a little cup and the backpack just sort of sits in the cup and if you don't glue it it'll fall off now you can magnetize them and i've seen a lot of people that have talked about how you can magnetize them but i think i couldn't find a way to really attach a magnet onto the seraphim it's quite a small little contact point i didn't want a really big disc magnet there so I went ahead and glued them. I don't play that many games. I'll just have to pack them really carefully and hope they don't break. Um, it is what it is. But I, I don't know anybody that likes these new flying stands. I actually liked it when Games Workshop were sort of sculpting their models so that there was a, a like a piece of banner trailing to the ground or a piece of ruin that a foot was like touching. And, you know, they would try and hide the fact that the model was actually not flying in midair with some sort of clever uh, piece of terrain or, or, or something like that. I thought that was the best way of doing it, um, which they did on the Gemini Superior and St. Celestine, which I have painted. They're not in this video because they're not one of the things I painted recently from while I've been on lockdown uh, with uh, this, this virus stuff. But I have painted them. There are some on my blog, which you can go and look at if you don't know what I'm talking about, or you can look on the Games Workshop website. And that artifice of having that bit of plastic what i thought was the best way of doing it but now we've got these stands and it's the same for the space marine stuff they all come with these flight stands i don't know anybody that really likes them maybe games workshop will drop them again maybe they won't who knows the rhino now the rhino is a really interesting one because this is the same old mark 2b space marine rhino that games workshop have sold over and over again in kits since not since i got into the hobby because i remember the original plastic rhino the one that was in two halves that you had to make but for a very long time we've had this rhino kit and um, the sisters of battle what they've done is they've made the tool an extra sprue so you get the extra sisters of battle sprue in the box and you, you get some pieces to put onto the rhino now that sprue is very good um you know, I don't regret purchasing the Sisters Rhino. It's a very lovely extra sprue. It's just one of those things where I always think, um, with miniatures, the actual plastic and the actual cost to manufacture one sprue is pence, right? And the way that Games Workshop justify charging quite a lot for their models is that it's the R&D cost of having the creative people actually sculpt the original model, and it's the setup cost of making the steel injection mold um to make the miniature and that's why uh, a single like character is often much much more expensive than a box of troops because first of all there tends to be more detail on a single character so that model has taken somebody longer to sculpt 
And secondly, people are going to buy less of that. You know, if you've got like a Space Marine Captain, you're only going to buy one Space Marine Captain of any particular given type of your army. So they're going to sell less volume, so it will take them longer to make back the costs of the steel moulds that make them. But whenever you buy something that has the the Space Marine, well, it's essentially the Space Marine Mark II B Rhino frames in, Games Workshop are at this point basically printing money because that kit must have made its initial development costs back you know, I would say almost over, almost certainly over 10 years ago now. So it's a little bit dubious, that one, especially when you consider that the Sisters of Battle used to have, I think they had a slightly more ornate Rhino when they had the Rhino that came in the old Immolator kit, because that had the whole strange extra top plate that you could put on. Um, so for, they didn't need to redesign that model. They could have just kept selling the old Immolator as the Rhino and then sold the new the new emulator, which I haven't got a new emulator in this video, that's what you're waiting for, because I haven't got around to building and painting mine yet. Uh, there is one waiting to be done. But it is what it is. The Repressor. Now this, going back to old kids, this is one of the few old kits that's still in the army now. The Repressor's in an interesting place, but as we wait for 9th edition, we don't know if the Repressor is going to still have models in ninth is models is going to still have rules sorry in ninth edition um we have been told that there's going to be forge world indexes coming out when ninth edition launches but the thing is that the repress has not been sold by forge world for quite some time now in fact i happen to know um because i always make sure to speak to uh, andy hall whenever i visit a games workshop event in nottingham and he's sort of remembers me remembers what i look like and he remembers what my wife looks like and we you know we're not friends but we have that small element of recognition he actually told me at one point that he had to go and make sure personally that the repressor got rules the last time that the the, 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 the forge world rules were updated because i don't think the repressor was even in production at the start of eighth edition right so it's only through his uh machination as far as i can remember the conversation that it even got rules in 8th edition. Um, because it's a really cool idea. It's a really cool model. Now, whether it gets updated rules or not, I don't know. It does sound like it will be something that will be really, really strong. Perhaps too strong in the 8th edition rules. With it being a transport with heavy flavour on the front. Um, you know, that it's able to shoot in combat. And it's got its firing ports. Are the firing ports going to have their rules still? Are you going to be firing out of them? Firing at fire imports in combat, is that going to be a thing? It'd be very, very interesting. And honestly, in my heart of hearts, I think it's probably going to go to uh, Warhammer Legends and not be sort of available for competitive play. I think what I will do if that happens is I will just clip off the... Um, I will just clip off the heavy flamer from the hatch ring and use them as rhinos because they're still... A, it's a rhino with an ornate front ram and it's got a storm bolt of the same as a rhino, so... That's what I will do with mine, I think. Um, okay, now one of the newest things that I've painted. So this is a Retributor Squad. It's a Heavy Bolter Retributor Squad. Now, I really like the Retributor Squad kit in a couple of ways. The Sister Superior. I've said Sergeant a couple of times, but I'll use the correct verbiage. The Sister Superior in the Retributor Squad box is, I think, for my, my personal take, is a lot nicer than the Sister Superior uh, in the standard Sisters of Battle box. It's got some really nice ornate pieces. They've got that, um, the sort of, not Iron Halo, but Iron Halo type thing that can sit on the back banner or a third lee that can sit like as a back banner. Um, it's got some really nice heads that come with it and a really nice sets of arms as well. Um, annoyingly, it comes with two of every heavy weapon. So, if you want multi melters, it comes with two multi melters. If you want heavy flames, it comes with two heavy flames. If you want heavy bolters, it comes with two heavy bolters. Now, I happen to have mine with four heavy bolters only because the Sisters of Battle Infantry squads come with heavy bolters. Now, I'm not using them on uh, on my infantry squad, so I have the spare heavy bolters and heavy bolter arms, and they do fit pretty well with only a little bit of sort of uh, fiddling onto the bodies from the Retributor kit, so you can do it that way. Uh, I imagine it's probably the same with the heavy flamers if you wanted four heavy flamers. The trick is if you want 
for multi melters, you don't get a plastic multi melter in the racing troops box. So if you wanted a squad of four multi melters, which I understand from re I'm not a competitive player, but I try and read what the competitive players say. I understand from what the competitive players say that um, you know four multi melters is considered to be a powerful option. Then you're going to have to buy two boxes to make your one squad with all multi melters, and then what are you going to do with the spare parts that you have? Are you going to make four heavy bolters or four heavy flamers or something like that? I, I don't know. Moving on, we've got the magnifier. The magnet, I'm really pleased with the paint job on this model. Um, one of the things I will say for Sisters of Battle is they are one of the most difficult armies to paint. Just in terms of how much detail they have on their basic, you know, the basic thing that is a Sister of Battle. You've got, you know, unlike Space Marines who have just the armour, you know, every single Sister of Battle you've got armour and robes. So straight away they're as detailed as like a veteran Space Marine. Coupled with that, you've got the fact that that far more bare heads, uh, non-helmeted heads in a Sisters of Battle army. Now I know the new, the new um, Sisters of Battle box does have enough helmets, so you could make them all helmeted if that's what you want to do. But I've really enjoyed challenging myself to paint better and better faces. I think my face painting has got has just really improved over the course of doing this project. Even and this is one of the last faces that I've painted time in which I make this video um, and I just think it's really really nice I actually was looking at a few of uh, Darren Latham's um, tutorials on his YouTube channel now he is a former you know leagues leagues not even on the same ballpark as my skill level um, former heavy metal painter former miniatures designer uh, he still works for Games Workshop I think in the in the in, games design studio now something like that i'm not sure i'm sure somebody can correct me but either way whatever way you cut it he is absurdly talented and even just looking at how he approaches painting faces and obviously skipping out half to two-thirds of the steps that he goes through has um improved my ability to paint faces no end so for all i really you know and i have to credit Warhammer TV and, 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 and Duncan Rhodes and Chris Peach and all these people for putting out painting guides that are sort of at a level where I can follow them and feel like I've got the same result that they've got on the video or something close to it. I do think sometimes that going to look at people who are just much, much better than you, if they are, um, you know, breaking it down into steps and just absorbing, like, the way they think about colours and the way they think about how the paint works and things like that, it, it's a almost a totally different language. You know, it's all about um, going from often with like a Warhammer TV painting video and the way I learned to paint, you darken everything down and then you light it up. So you put on your base coat, you put on your wash, you brush over... Uh, leaving the darkest bit in the recesses and then you highlight up, highlight up, highlight up, highlight up. Um, whereas what the the level above that, the sort of heavy metal type painters will tend to do is start with white so that the lightest colour they can get and then everything is, is thin glazes of colour to sort of add filters and darken it down and darken it down. And they do highlight things back up occasionally as well. But it's just a di the, the default position is you're going to go from light to dark rather than that you're going to go from dark to light. And, I mean, I um, I do both. I, I Actually having a decent idea of how good you are at painting, or I think probably at any skill, is really hard. Something that I always tell people when I have to give them advice about anything. I've said this to people at work. I've said this to people in other hobbies that I have. It's really difficult to see the shape of a thing from inside that thing so i have no idea how good i am at painting um a part of the reason that i put i've got twitter instagram and i do the, i'm doing this kind of content part of it is i just don't know is this good um and it's interesting because there are some communities online where you will post a model and everyone will say it's brilliant and you think oh that's brilliant and then you see somebody post a model that 
I'm not trying to be mean, but obviously it's got it's got some obvious flaws. And rather than sort of kindly pointing out those flaws, people are just like, oh, it's brilliant, well done. And I understand it. And, you know, there are loads of communities like that um, that I enjoy uh, participating in where everyone just wants to be super encouraging. But it does also mean, always mean at the back of your mind you're thinking, so how how do I know what level I'm on? You know, and, and people always say to you, well, it's not about what level other people think you're on. It's about what are you satisfied with? But for me personally, I'm satisfied with a level that other people, like that's my personal criteria is that I want other people to look at it and go, oh, wow, that's pretty good. Um, And I don't know if I'm there yet. And I don't know how you ever, I don't know how you ever know that. I've got way off topic. This is going to be like half an hour. Yeah, it's 26 minutes already now. Maybe we lose some in the edit. Okay, but it's going to be like a half hour video at this rate. Is that good? Is that bad? I'm new to this whole YouTube thing. Maybe if you like this and you stick around and subscribe, I'll learn to upload some shorter videos that aren't tear-inducingly boring. I don't know. But I should move on to the next miniature, probably. So the next one, and we've only got a few things left. The next one is the Sister Hospital. And now this was a really interesting model because it has a dying sister on the base. And I needed to try and work out how to paint sort of dying, uh, you know, a dying person isn't going to be the same pinkness and vibrance of a, of a regular, uh, you know, uh, someone who isn't in the process of dying. So I used, um, it was the pallid, rich, pallid, witch flesh, rakar flesh. Those kinds of colours. So she looks... She's got the same kind of skin tone as a Dark Eldar, to be honest. But I think it works. And then I tried to get the little... The blood trickling down the corner of the mouth. Is that too grim? I don't know. I'd like it. So I think that's that's turned out really well. Um, and it, the Hospital was a really interesting model to paint as well. Uh, as with a lot of these Sisters of Battle. I, I am somebody who always glues the model together first and then paints it. You know, I've... Unless it's like an Imperial Knight, or or a, like a, something like that, where it's a massive model and you've got loads of panels. If it's an infantry model, I stick it together and then I paint it. So, trying to get in behind, between the legs, around, behind the skirt, difficult. But at the end of the day, if you can't, if you can't see something to paint it, then probably no one else is going to see it. To, to, to notice that you've painted it badly, right? So I I personally like to build everything and then later come back and paint everything. That's and I know especially a lot of people are thinking, oh but you've got to leave heads separately, right? You've got to leave the heads separate so you can undercoat them white. And I don't I just I'll spray them all black and then when I come to do the head I'll take out the um wraith bone usually I'll go for a wraith bone undercoat on the face and then paint it up from wraith bone. I know I'd probably get better results if I left the heads off, but that's just the way I am. Right. Um, the Missionary. This is one of those really old metal models that... Um, now, this model... I don't know how old this is, but I do know that he's featured in the colour pages of the 2nd edition Sisters of Battle Codex. So, we're on ninth edition Warhammer 40k now, well, coming up in the next couple of months. So he's definitely in the second edition Sisters Codex, the first ever Sisters of Battle Codex. So it's a pretty old model. Um, it's probably been in the hobby longer than I have. Um, and yeah, just a pleasure. Yeah, his face is kind of big. He's got kind of a big head. He's got a bit of the potato face thing going on. But he was sculpted by hand, you know, without a computer. He's made of metal. He's bags of character. Um, and it was really nice to paint him with sort of modern a modern palette you know he's not bright red all over or something like that with modern skills and with those modern decals from the sisters of battle transfer sheet on his little book that he carries on his stick so i think that's it's just really nice to come back and really um you know to give an old model that really updated look i've, I've done a few things like that before i've got some old metal commissars in my imperial guard collection I'm going to have some other old metals in, in the Sisters Army when I get around to them as well. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's it's fun, I think, to go back and have the odd metal model. And he doesn't look 
massively out of place. He doesn't look like he's a, a totally different creature. You know, he still looks like a human alongside the other sisters of sisters. It would be different, I think, if I was trying to use an old metal sister of battle who was like a head shorter than the other things that were supposed to be the same. But I think he looks good in the army anyway. And I've no doubt that when they come to redo the Imperial Guard Codex, we might get plastic uh, priests. That might be something that comes on the card, and then I'll buy the paint of plastic ones as well. But I don't regret the time spent painting the Metal Priest. Right, the very last thing that I have um, painted is the Battle Sanctum, the um, terrain piece for the battle. Now, this looks really impressive. Actually, it was really simple to paint. If you go onto Warhammer TV and you search for Kill Team Terrain, um, it's all the the main apart from the statue and the door. The whole thing is just done by that method with lots of dry brushing. Uh, it's a Cassandra dust base coat and then like an all over uh, wash with um, Agrax Earth Shade, and then you you remove a little bit of the wash with a paper towel, and then you give it uh, you paint the metal um, and shade the metal, and then the real trick with terrain is once you've done everything else on it. Give the whole thing an all over dry brush of Screaming Skull. And you can just, you can highlight that. You can even highlight metallics with Screaming Skull. I, I would only do it on terrain, but highlight the whole thing with Screaming Skull. And it just ties the whole thing together. The terrain, terrain pieces shouldn't be as eye catching and as detailed as the miniatures, because when you put the miniatures on them, you don't want the miniatures to sort of disappear into the terrain piece. Now, there are a couple of things on there that. I did take my time over. So the statue and the eagle on the door. And in fact going back. The in magnifiers. Um, not banner. But icon that she's carrying around. That's all done in a sort of weird. Marbly sandstone colour. That I had to sort of invent myself. Now I'm a great believer in using a lot of tutorials. A, a lot of guides. A lot of recipes. I guess that other people have put together. To know what paints to put on where. But for that particular colour, um, it's a, a Zandri dust base with a Seraphim sapia wash all over. And then it's actually flayed one flesh as the main colour that you brush on quite thin over the the washed Zandri dust. Um, so that it's slightly translucent to try and make it have that kind of stone effect. And then finally an edge highlight of Screaming Skull. Um... And yeah, I hope that's been interesting for you. It's been nearly 30, we're going to come up on 35 minutes before I finish this, but hopefully that's been interesting for you. That is all models that I've painted here in the UK. We're still on coronavirus lockdown, so that is all miniatures that I've painted during the coronavirus outbreak of 2020, just to date the video. Um, and hopefully I might put more content up on my YouTube channel. I, you know, I've only got four or five videos on here. Uh, I've had to invest in a high quality microphone for my other hobbies and for my job as well, actually. Um, I'm a school teacher and we've had to record lessons and things for the kids while we've been going on with this lockdown business. So having invested in a bit of the kit, I know that the camera's not the highest quality in the world, but really you didn't come here to see my face flapping up and down. Hopefully you came here to look at the beautiful miniatures or I hope that they're, you consider them to be beautiful anyway. Um, yeah, if you liked it, then please do subscribe to the channel just so that you get, if I do something else, you get a little alert, that'd be nice, and click the, I sound all professional now, subscribe and click the bell, but, you know, if, if you want to, it helps, doesn't it? Okay, thank you, and I'll see you all next time.